Hey guys, I'm Rachel Cruz. I'm George Camel. And this is Smart, Smart Money, Money Happy, Happy Hour. Hmm. Delicious, George. Delectable. Well, this is the show where two friends who happen to be money experts talk about what you're talking about. Things going on in the world, pop culture, and of course, money. And can I just say, Rachel, our audience is wide ranging from six year olds to many, many boomers who reached out <laughs> to let us know they listen. Because one of our past episodes, I was like, yeah, so if a boomer's listening, they don't know what an influencer is. George, you're like, boomers are listening? They are. I know. And then we got a few six and seven year old fans out there. So our target demo, alive. That's who we're going <laughs> after. Breathing. If you're breathing, this show is for you. <laughs> That's right. So today, George, we're going to be talking about money around the world. It's so interesting. This is, you know, all about how people save and spend and give in certain countries from money celebrations to superstitions, which we're all a little stitious, as Michael Scott would say. Oh my gosh, yeah. So lots of, yeah, cultures do different traditions and all that. So we're going to dive into it, which I'm excited about. And yes. today we are sipping on a what? A Sazerac. Another very culture drink born out of uh, New Orleans and the, and the French... Mm. inspired culture. It's delicious. So we're going to give you our rating on that, the recipe, and the cost per glass at the end of the episode. Stick around. That's right. So, George, shall we dive in? Should we Should we, Should we? we get, in a, get, in, a, get world. in a plane? Fly around the world? A hot air balloon. All the, oh. That's the way to travel. It feels like Amelia Earhart-esque. Makes me a little nervous. Which is your daughter's name. It is, and she's doing Amelia a Amelia Earhart Cruz. There I think it's a, it's a beautiful name. <laughs> So as hosts of The Ramsey Show, we know that obviously people handle money very differently, and sometimes their culture or traditions come into play of oh, how they yeah. ha handle money Sometimes today. they're mad at us, Rachel, because they go, well, in my culture, and i sorry, we're here, I mean, <laughs> we only know this one culture, so I don't know. I can't speak to everyone's culture. We can't. We, we Don't at me. We're not that smart. We're not that smart. Thank so you. again, this conversation is going to scratch the surface. There's a lot of money traditions a lot of ways people celebrate with money around the world. So we want to hear from you, though, because I think it's fun. You know, we have listeners from all over the world, George. Oh, yeah. So DM us. Let us know what your money tradition well, is because we do want to know. it in the YouTube comments as well if you're yes. watching over there because we're on video now. There's 17 cameras in this room. We it's are. very exciting. Okay, George, so you're probably the most cultured out of all of us. You Thank are you. from— Out of the two of us? Yeah. You, I, mine is like I've been here for— Centuries, the line. East Tennessee is its own culture. Yeah, I know that is probably you very got true. a lot. But do you have traditions from the? Because your parents, yes, again, my dad, remind people where your parents are from. So my dad was born in Egypt. My mom was born in Syria. And I actually just before we recorded, I was like, Mom, Dad, are there any like weird traditions? They were largely unhelpful, but Chat <laughs> GPT was super helpful. <gasps> That's so your culture. I went to chat GPT and I was like, What are some of the most interesting money traditions from the Egyptian and Syrian culture? Please share. George, and, this is like coming right from you. You're like you're like one generation removed. Are you so excited the, right now? And I sent it to my parents, and they said, oh, my goodness, this is amazing. All of these are true. And so here's just some interesting ones. Okay. Uh, Egypt basically invented the tip. It's called batshish. Nice. And so no matter who in your life provides any kind of service, you tip them, even like a teacher. It's customary hey, to amen. give them a tip. I would, I would, I, we should be tipping teachers more. So it's not mandatory, but it's considered a kind gesture, and you'll probably get, you know— a rude look if you don't. Another one that's interesting is, you're going to love this, ancient Egypt, it was customary for pharaohs to have their faces stamped on gold coins as a way to ensure their likeness would be seen and remembered for generations to come. Ah, uh, That's good branding. I, yeah, but I feel like that that held true. I don't know where it started, right? But I majority of cultures, I mean, here in America, presidents' faces on coins yeah. and dollar bills. You look at the Romans, right? Caesar was on that, so absolutely. I don't know where it started. Maybe I'm going to go with Egypt. Did it start in Egypt? I mean, the Middle East gave you guys like the number system, the alphabet, hummus. You're claiming so much to be grateful for. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you, you never thank, thank me for you, any of those, George. So let's look at different topics of money and how it impacts different cultures around the world. So let's look at savings because a lot of cultures participate in group savings. So in the Western world, we're very an, we're an individual culture in the Western world, right? You save up every man for himself for your family. And that's it. I mean, even, yeah, we'll give some to our kids, but sometimes it's like, mm, not till a certain age, or once you're a certain age, you should be on your own. You know, obviously, like healthcare, people can be on their parents till like 26. That's true. But even in America, it's not 
a custom. It's not a tradition. It's not in us to like even take care of our parents financially, right? Oh yeah. So like, well, there's, you know, the old you're very, it's very individual. It's like your four hundred one k. It's your savings. I mean, we are a very like you're responsible for you. Yes, that's a very Western mindset, and that's that's how we live, and that's kind of how we teach even with the baby steps. It's like yeah. Take care, take care of your household. Mm. Well, in the Western culture, you know, we haven't done a great job handling money. And so when you rely on your parents who are broke, that's a bad plan. And when the parents now have to rely on their children because they did a bad job handling I money, know. that's a bad plan. Do you think West, the Western world is worse at handling money than other parts of the world? I wouldn't throw like America under the bus, but I do think we, we love debt more than any other culture in the yes. world. Like yep. we have made it this a good thing and it's a ticket to wealth for a lot of people. And I think that's what's caused us to get to this point. And how much of it do you think is like our expectation of how we're supposed to live, yeah. right? Like in America, I'm like, it's just, it's there. Well, it's the land of opportunity, the American dream. Right, right. So it's like embedded. And sometimes it's ingrained you have to take out a loan to get the dream. Like, seriously. And I'm like, and it's just, that's what you do. Oh, you know the old saying, Southwest. it takes a village. That's how most of the world still operates. Yes, that's you right. You take care of each other. The, the parents move back in with the kids. And this also bleeds into savings. So let's talk about how the savings structure works. Yes. Yeah, so in other cultures, for example, in West Africa and the Caribbean, groups save it using an informal rotating savings club called a SUSU. Oh, that's fun. Is that right? Susu. So here's how it works. A group of people get together and contribute an equal amount of money into a fund, and they set intervals. So it's like monthly or weekly. It's like 100 bucks a month, we're all going to throw money into this pot. That's right. Yep. So the total pool is called the hand, and it's paid out to one of the members of the club on a previously agreed upon schedule. And the pool rotates until all the members receive their share. What? This doesn't make sense. <laughs> Is it not? So do you just get your money back? Like, are you making money off of this? Or is it just a forced savings plan? That's what it it's sounds sounding like. sounding like a forced savings plan. So if you put in a thousand bucks total, eventually you, you'll get your thousand bucks back. No, your turn. how about this? If I put a thousand dollars in and everyone else puts in a thousand, but I need eight thousand and there's like 20 people that are doing it, I take the eight thousand. That's the question. Is it all equally? And everyone I'm sure. Given? Oh, yeah. Shoot. It feels very like we equitable. We need to go to Latin America and have them explain yeah, this to us. Because well, here's the good thing. There's a level of accountability. There's a true. pro to like, oh, I have to put in this amount of money because I have agreed upon it. That's the four savings plan side. I like yeah, that. which is like, because some people are like, oh, I just can't save. And it's just so hard. This is like, no. There's some it's social part of your pressure. Culture. Yeah, like this is what you're doing. You have to do it. So there's a yeah. pro to that, right? Well, the, the cons are uh, there's kind of a mutual trust. There's no government regulation here. You're just hoping that everyone is cool about it and doesn't take more than their share. And so there's a lot of trust that has to be built. Yes. Next, celebrations. Yes. So there's a lot. So of, much to celebrate. So much to celebrate here. But yeah, cultures use this a lot, right? So whether it's weddings or anniversaries or birthdays, money plays a huge role in celebrations. And it does here in America too, right? People pay insane amount of money for their kids' birthday parties or for mm -hmm. weddings or fill in the blank, but spending money on celebrations is is true really anywhere around the world. Yeah. Well, gifts for holidays in general is a big deal, but weddings is where the money gets dropped. And so let's talk about weddings around the world. Uh, there's something that is called the dollar dance, which is very popular uh, in Poland, Hungary, Nigeria, Philippines, Mexico, and of course, the Midwest. <laughs> what? Which is also known as America's tiny Europe. Apparently. <laughs> They're so, who knew they were so cultured? They are cultured. They've got tater tot hot dish and the dollar dance. They have <laughs> it all. They have cheese and dollar wow. dances. So who this knew? is also known as the money or apron dance. Can you tell us how the dollar dance works? This yes. is very interesting. So money is tossed, handed, or pinned on to the couple while different guests take turns dancing with the newlyweds. The Filipino prosperity dance. So male guests line up in front of the bride and pin money to her dress. Women pin money to the groom. And this yeah, is a they... lot of close contact for me. We're all very sweaty. It's been a long day. I think we all need to keep some distance. Okay, here's the question. I think this is where they got it right. Because we register for gifts in America, which is helpful. But when you register... I know when we went and we got married young. And so it's like you get this like little this little scanner gun at Bed Bath and oh, Beyond. Yeah. And I just went and went crazy. You get the tea towels. With the stupidest stuff I could ever imagine. But I was like, why not? You know, you feel like you're on supermarket sweep or something. You're just like, I'm just grabbing Did stuff. Winston, I feel like Winston would not be into this. He just I don't know. I don't I don't even know he if he went. went. I don't ride. even know if he 
went. I think you, you were did. by yourself. But like, you think back on it, I'm like, m- actual money yes. may have been more valuable to use. Now, granted, I guess you could have just spent it and been flip it with money. Well, that's another Middle Eastern tradition. I found out from my parents, they don't do gifts. It's cash. It's all cash. For weddings, which I love that. Let's take that to America. That's what I'm saying. I kind of feel like that might be, right? Because when well, you have it's money like, it's like and then you car. go to Bed Bath & Beyond, you're thinking like, do I really need the $300 skillet or can you I don't. do the $60? Like you're sitting there like it goes back to consumerism. We <laughs> love stuff. <laughs> we want stuff. And when you give someone money, it's like, oh, I feel like we should get them something off the registry. You know, know. the people have that feeling. I think I'm gonna start giving money, George. I'm a huge fan of money. And, and the, the Greeks, this is a big one, the old money dance. They love a good dance. Same yeah. idea. The cash is pinned to the bride only. Italian brides carry la borsa. <laughs> Mozzarella. It's Mozzarella. a small <laughs> satin bag used to hold money. Which I think we should bring that back. I love a satin bag used to hold money. Very classy. Little little coins in there. Yeah. I think it's good. Yep. Um, Okay, so with that, the guests place envelopes full of money into the bag to help cover the cost of the wedding and the honeymoon. And sometimes the bride wears it while dancing at the reception, and men who want to dance with her can pay for that privilege. I do love the idea of the you have to pay for the privilege to dance with the bride. It's kind of nice. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to start charging Whitney for my impromptu <laughs> dance moves at home. Uh, but I, I do think cash gifts are the way to go. That's just yeah, that's my it. hot take. Okay, and so in Japan, I'm going to have you take this one because okay. I am not great at phonics. So pronouncing oh these yeah, is so going to be tough for me. Couples in Japan receive... Goshuji? Goshuji. 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 Goshugi? I think it's a gi. Goshugi. Gi. Yeah. Well Goshugi done. on their wedding day, which is just gift money. This is the contribution of every guest to the wedding itself and the couple's new life. Yep. So again, it's kind of like you're helping pay for the wedding because obviously it costs a lot of money and a little bit to get them started on the newlywed journey. So I love that. So they bring in a special envelope and they bring it to the receptionist. Which is the Goshugi Bukuro. Oh, thank you. You take it. Take it. I just and wanted to say it. It was a fun word. Goshugi. Yeah, and you did good, Bukaro. Thank you. That was good. That Bukuro. was good. And the bills must be new and crisp. Now that I love. Me too. Isn't that nice? There's something just so elegant about a crisp, fresh bill. <laughs> I agree, George. Hot off the press. I agree. So the amount is determined by your relationship with the couple, and I kind of like this too. Okay. It's kind of nice. So if you're a friend or a coworker, it's 30,000 yen, which is $250. Okay. A boss or an employer, so if you're like the boss, then it's 50,000 yen or $370. Wow. And close family up to a hundred thousand yen, which is seven hundred and forty-one dollars right now. So that's expensive. That feels like a lot. So with this though, the whatever the amount is, it should not be a number that can be easily split into two clean halves. What? Hence, like thirty thousand is standard. Okay. Because it starts with an odd number. Sure. So the starting gift with an even number is considered poor symbolism for marriage. Weird. Because it's easily split. Huh. Okay. So four and nine are very unlucky numbers in Japan. So you would never give 40,000 yen or 90,000 yen. I appreciate that. I wish I had stuff like this in my life. Very well, specific directions that you're like, that feels like, good. Like we won't do th- – there's no 13th – floor on the no, elevator. That is true. Yeah, that is true. Which feels like a very weird superstitious thing we all just adopted and we're like, yeah, yeah, that's normal. Everyone that's knows normal. that. That's what happens. I guess so. Yep. Wow. So now there's also generosity and, you know, you can't take money with you when you leave here. No. And so being generous is a big part of your financial plan. We talk about this at Ramsey a lot. Regardless of where you are financially, giving should be a part of your financial plan. Again, whether it's a little or a lot, be generous. So uh, there's a lot of generosity traditions around the world. Yeah, Kenya has one. They have one called Harambe, and the word means all pulled together in a language called Kiwasili? Kiwasili? Kiwasili, yep. You did better. Ki- Ki- Kiswa. Kiswahili. Ki- Kiswahili. Kiswahili. Oh, it's like Swahili with ki in front of it. We Why got we- this. What are we doing? Kiswahili which is Kenya's national language. Fun fact, Rachel. So this phrase is even in their national motto, and it's less about regular savings, like we talked about earlier, and more about fundraising for specific needs. So Harambe is like the OG GoFundMe. 
Yes. Which I like. I can get behind that. Yeah. So it's just for like a big life event, like a wedding, education opportunity, serious illness, a relative's funeral. So if someone needs financial help, then they will contact an elder in their family or tribal leader. And then this leader will call a meeting of all the elders and see if the issue is deemed significant enough to oh. warrant the strength of the community. They will organize a harambe. I like this. You know what? I like this too. Because sometimes you see the GoFundMe and it's like, go fund my trip to Europe. You're like, sorry. Or like, GoFundMe, just like pay off my debt because I overspent and did stupid. I know. And then you have the GoFundMe of like, yeah, like like someone's hot. The house burnt down. There's a medical issue. Or a husband is in the, yeah, is in the hospital with a, you know, a cancer diagnosis. So like help the family out. Like there's actually a legitimate, for me. Well, this honestly reminds me of, of what the church should be. And yeah. what some churches do well. That's right. Which That's is right. support their their community in times of need. So I'm all about this. And this doesn't have to be like a huge donation. You know, every, every little bit counts. And uh, there's an incredible pay it forward practice in Turkey called Eskida Akmik. Yes. So this is an interesting one. So it means suspended wow. bread or bread on a hook. Ooh. So here's how it works. You go to a bakery, pay for two loaves of bread but only take one and you tell the person who takes the money that the one loaf is. Eskida Ahmik. Thank you. So your tradition is then. I knew you were waiting on me for the pronunciation. Bagged bagged and hung together with other. Eskida Ahmik. Loaves. So that when people come through the day and they ask, is there any bread on the hook? And they can take the loaf for free. I love that. That's we should nice. start doing that. It is. That's like with the the pay, like when you're in the drive through, and someone pays. But it's I like, like the pay it forward thing. I, Why? You, how many bakeries do you go to, George, and ask for a I'm loaf a, of bread? The American the way is the drive through now. Yeah, but at the drive through, I don't know if the person behind me is even on the struggle bus. <laughs> you know, sure they got eight kids in the minivan all ordering frappuccinos, but they're doing just fine. I like the bread maneuver because then it's someone who actually needs the bread shows up and goes, hey. I, I can't afford the bread. Can I have the bread on the hook? Bread on the hook, yes. That's why I see it differently. All right, that's fine. But in the generosity spirit, as Christians, that is like, that is part of our spiritual walk is being generous. And so again, the tithe is part of that. Yes, 10% so 10% to your local yeah. church. Uh, but I think it, it's, you know, it's it's more beyond that too. I think it's the way you live your life. Is it more of a selfless life that you you give and you serve and you're helping people around you or that selfish perspective? So there's kind of that, that biblical tradition of the tithe, but I think it goes beyond that too. And I think people have that generosity spirit. Yeah, and I regardless think regardless of your faith, I think opening we your need hand to get and back giving to these cultures where it's just like you support your local community and you know the needs of the community. At this point, we don't know anything because we just see what's on social media. That's right. So very rarely do we even know who's struggling unless we're reaching out to organizations who are actively in the community. Yep. So the generosity, it's a. Uh, it's a part of, again, it needs to be a part of your financial journey regardless of where you are. Uh, and now for the fun part. The superstition. Are you are you superstitious? I feel like you, if you no. lean conspiracy theory, you lean superstitious. Nope. Two different categories to me. Wow. Two I different put, categories, like step on a crack. Like what are, what are superstitious? Like step on a crack, you break your mind's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Love that's, that the one. So that's the first one that came to mind. Walking <laughs> underneath a ladder is that one? No, yeah, that's one. I do that. Opening an umbrella indoors. Do that. I don't. Yeah, see, that stuff doesn't like that stuff is just like it's dumb. I don't think it's like superstitious. <laughs> just why are you doing that? Wouldn't do that. Quit doing that. Wouldn't do that. But there's a lot of superstitions and cultures around the world. So one from the UK is the Christmas sixpence. I was really hoping for an English accent on that one. Oh shoot. Cri- just try it. You have a good English accent. Got to we know this from the royalty episode. the tea. Christmas. <laughs> I can't do it. Yes, you can. I feel good about this. I really tried. You have to walk into uh, it with the old spot of tea yeah, trick. Yeah, spot of tea. Hello. Hello. Christmas. Christmas. Six- <laughs> Christmas sixpence. No, that wasn't good. It might not be good either. Oh, that's a hard one. That, is, is a, hard that one. actually is a hard one. Christmas. You try, Lindsay. This is going to go so bad. Okay. Hold on. I got to think about how you, you pronounce this. this stuff. Christmas. Okay. Christmas. Christmas. Six- <laughs> what What was that? <laughs> I'm looking so bad at acting to like you put me on the spot. Oh, I'm really I'm so, uncomfortable. I'm sorry. Think- Lindsay, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to do that. It's okay. Sorry, I just like forgot right. how anyone speaks to you. I'm sorry. 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 I'
Go. Christmas expense. Christmas How do you is- say it again? Just let it roll. Don't don't put too much the effort Christmas in. Christmas expense. Christmas <laughs> expense. <laughs> what is this for us you're doing with the Christmas expense? I'm done. I'm so sorry. I tried. Wow. Out of all the cultures I thought we would offend today, UK <laughs> was not on my list. <laughs> the English was not on my list. Uh, they I'm hate sorry. us so much. Oh my goodness. But don't you wish you talked like them though? Oh yeah. Uh, man. Gosh. Well, here's what this is. A sixpence is a former British monetary unit equal to six pennies. Makes sense. Six pence, six pennies. You tracking? I got you. Okay, here's how it works. On the Sunday before Advent, families gather in the kitchen to help make the Christmas pudding. Christmas pudding. 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 And a silver sixpence is placed into the pudding mix. Not okay. And every member of the household gives the mix a stir, and whoever finds the sixpence in their own piece of the pudding on Christmas Day sees it as a sign that they would enjoy wealth and good luck that year. But having a piece of dirty metal in your pudding, I'm not eating that. George, get over yourself and be a UK fan, please. All right, fine. You can have your nickels and pudding or whatever. (laughs) Okay, so there's another superstition from Greece originally. Now other places, and it's the never empty wallet. So the idea here is that money attracts money. So you never want your wallet or your purse completely empty. And if you give one as a gift, then you want to make sure to stash a little something in there, even a dollar. So if you give like a purse or a wallet as a gift, you got to stash some money in there. Okay, this one isn't necessarily a superstition, but it comes from a place of suspicion. Now that is a rhyme. There you go. Germans. Let's talk about the Germans. They still insist on using cash for almost all of their transactions. Man. Dave Ramsey would be a fan of that. Especially 90s, Dave. Yep. Cash is king. And so, yeah, they're uh, a little bit apprehensive to some money, like the abstract forms of it. So, like, stocks, shares, credit, all oh. of that. Because, again, they want, the, they want the actual cash. They want to see it and touch it. Yep. Okay. And historians attribute this cultural phenomenon to two things. Uh, Stasi? The Stasi. So the oh. state of service in East Germany's communist government from 1950 to 1990, and the Gestapo, Gestapo which was the Nazi police, police force. Yep. Okay. Uh, so they're, so they're, they're one, It's like the surveillance idea, right? Who's this surve- is kind of a conspiracy. No, I could get on board with this. So like, who, who's watching my who's money? Who's watching our money, George? If I have it all physically, I know exactly where it exactly. is. Exactly. You know what? I could go there. I could go all cash. Rachel could go there. Because it's it's true. Who's 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 looking? Who's seeing? Are they on your side? Are they not? We don't know. And Rachel, Germans have, uh, they have a lot of history with kind of losing money and being scared of this. The Panic of 1873 uh, was a financial crisis that saw small investors in Germany lose everything. And even during the pandemic, 75% of their transactions were still cash. That's amazing. That's pretty wild. That's amazing. Almost eight out of 10. Yeah. That's crazy. In August of 2020, NPR published an interview with a woman who was local in Berlin named Valerie. They asked her about her cash use despite the pandemic. And she said, when I use a card, I have the feeling I've got an unlimited limited supply of money, and that's not the case. With cash, it's easier to see you've overspent because it's gone. Is she a Ram- Valerie, is she? Does she do the Ramsey plan? We should send her something. Maybe Financial Peace University, maybe your book. I know. This is it, though, for real. When you spend with cash, there is something that happens when you let it go, and you know it's gone. Well, it's we've gone been conditioned. Forever. We don't want to feel any pain. We want all the convenience. But part of winning with money is forcing yourself to feel some pain and having that delayed gratification and pushing back against all this consumerism. Oh, okay, like, I just, someone sent me an email their kid got from the Scholastic Book Fair, and it said, cash is king, question mark, not at the book fair. E-wallet is the way to pay at this year's Scholastic Book Fair. No so way. So everything is going away from cash, and yeah. I... I think obviously it's going to cause a lot of overspending because you don't. There's no actual thing you're giving away. Right, right. You're when not you've feeling saved the pain up your of it. little pennies and your little dollars to get that book, and you have to give them Man. that cash. You feel it. There are times raising kids today that I'm like, okay, because I like we. I watched my parents struggle. Like they came out of bankruptcy. We shopped at garage sales. It was like, can't, I mean, yeah. You just like I just have early memories and into like middle school and even, like it just was. T- yeah, we were told no all the time because mom and dad didn't did not have the money. So part of the Ramsey plan is changing your family tree, right? You're getting out of debt. You're saving up so that your kids don't have to make the mistakes you made. Like, we really want to teach this upon our kids. So I do think about my kids as the second generation, right? Like, yeah. or the third. And they're growing up in a world where they're where Winston and I financially are doing great. Like, we're fine. You know, we didn't go through bankruptcy when they were kids. They haven't even witnessed struggle. That's right. So what, where can we put the struggle in? The book fair. 
Oh. I refused to let Amelia buy books at the book fair because I was never allowed to buy books at the book fair because we didn't have the money. And and I don't let her buy books at the What's book fair. What's her reaction to this? Oh, she hates it because everyone gets to go and buy books. I'm like, they are overpriced. True. And we can buy books anywhere else and we can check books out. At the, like, we can figure out a way. But you need to know that these overpriced books at this book fair, we're not, we're not just spending money. I'm not just giving you a $20 bill. Now, I know books are important, and she loves books, and we we buy books off I'm Amazon. I'm sure she has plenty of books. She's fine. That's not an issue. No, but it's the idea of like— It's the FOMO. Yes. Freshener. Did you buy stuff at the book fair? Oh, yeah. Your parents did. It's I just don't like, remember how. They just I think we were, on, we were on an allowance structure. You know, immigrant yeah. parents, they want better for their kids, I guess. So <laughs> they gave me 20 bucks to go, you know. I know. I struggle with the book fair. So anyways. Wow. I digress. Wow. George, My- there's been a lot. There's been a lot. This We've been around lot. the world. And I feel like this is free therapy for you, <laughs> and you're welcome. Thank you. She's really just being vulnerable. Thank you for that. You're a great mom. Thank you. You know, you got to put, this, you gotta put the struggle in somewhere. That's right. In the book there fair. is a lot of entitlement that we have to rally against with kids. Yes, you got to push against it. So, Love that. All right, George. I think it's almost the end of the episode, and we like to close out every episode with... Guilty as charged. This is where our producer gives us a new guilty as charged question every week. And if we are guilty, we have to take a sip. Mm. Marjorie asked, have you ever bought an MLM product? Did someone ever try to make you sign up to get rich? Oh, Oh, man. I feel like you've probably been pitched. You ever been to one of those Tupperware parties? Uh, Not a Tupperware party. But I've never done it. You never fallen for it? Like, no one's even ever asked you. Like, did you ever sniff it out? And you went, mm, not interested. Uh, there's probably been a few times that it was like, hey, there's this thing. Yeah. If you want to get in. I, I've been to a few of the parties. And then mm-hmm. I feel like they always pitch you at the parties. Have you ever bought a product that is technically an MLM product? Uh, like doTERRA essential oils. Yeah, for I don't. It's not my go-to. But I have twice because friends were doing it. And apartment wanted to support them. So one of them was like a was a jewelry based one. And I was like, oh, that's good. And I actually like the jewelry. So I was like, I'll buy that. Um, there was one party, and again, I don't want to be too specific because I don't know who be listens to this as podcast. As specific as you can be. I know. I we went I went to one party and didn't know we'll it. Bleep out the names. I didn't know it was an MLM party. And we went through the night, and I don't even want to say the thing because I don't want to make the person feel bad. But it was being served and all this, and it was great. And then at the end, they start pitching it. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is an MLM party. Was it wine? hmm Oh, interesting. Didn't know. But it was a wine MLM. Yeah. But I thought yeah. I was just going to a wine tasting that a yeah. friend was hosting. I mean, out of all the MLMs, I can get behind that one. But I didn't know. I didn't know it was one, which felt a little sneaky. It is sneaky. It's a little sneaky. Agreed. So uh, I have been pitched because I feel like, again, at these parts, they do pitch you to buy maybe even. But I just I didn't grow up in a household where mom and dad did that. Like I didn't oh. grow up in an MLM household. Yeah. So I don't feel this like attraction to it personally of like a way to make money because it's like, yeah, I just never grew. I never have thought about it. So. How about you, George? Yeah, I've I've fallen for the pitch. <gasps> you did. Tell me the story. And I went to the pitch meeting. You did. This guy walked up to me at the mall. No, you didn't even know him. No, George. <laughs> I was in Macy's on my lunch break, as <laughs> one like... does, you know. <laughs> and so I'm in the mall, and this guy just goes, "Hey, man, like that shirt?" And I go, "Oh, thanks." That's it. He walks away. Not two minutes later, he somehow sees me again, and he goes. Hey, you seem like a sharp guy. Are you like, do you like work around here? Like, what do you do for, for work? I was like, oh, I'm in, I'm in marketing. And he goes, that's amazing. My friend just started a business <gasps> and he's looking for some marketing help. Do you do any freelance work? I was like, yeah, I love a good side oh, hustle. Oh, no, George, he's roping you in. And so he was like, hey, all right, cool. Let me get your contacts. Was he like at a kiosk or was he just floating around he the mall? He was just a random guy at the mall. Okay, so just like a random me. guy. Okay, now it's like getting even sketchier. <laughs> I try to, ha- you know, give people the benefit of the doubt that he's just a normal guy. Just, yeah. <laughs> so I meet him at a Starbucks. I think my love song collection, I think this I is worse than the love song collection, but keep going. I meet this guy at Starbucks and he's got no, this. No, you met him off site? Yeah. So George we meet like days later. I'm like, great. We're going to meet. We're going to talk about the business. numbers. Yeah. 
Oh my God. We meet at Starbucks. He's got a tiny iPad <laughs> and he spins it around and it says Amway. And immediately my heart sank and I was like, oh, I just fell for an MLM pitch. Like I felt so dumb. He started, wow. and I'm too nice. So I'm letting this guy go through his little presentation. He's got a little goodie bag that has a sorted like, this is like generic brand Gatorade and here's like a cleaning product. And so I, <laughs> I'm such a terrible person. I text him the next day and said, I want no part in this. Please don't contact me anymore. And you can pick up your bag from the front desk at Ramsey from the receptionist. I couldn't even meet, see his face again. Because you were so distraught. George, number one, a stranger comes up to you. Yeah. I thought this was going to be a friend. No. A stranger. And then you give him your number, George. And then you meet him at a Starbucks. How old were you? Oh, I was, you know, in my 20s. How would you do today? If a guy came up to you and was well, like, hey, nice shirt. Here's the crazy part. I was in Target a few months later. This guy walks up to me, does the same same speed. He goes, like your glasses. I go, oh, thank you very much. <laughs> he comes back not minutes later and says, hey, uh, what do you like? What do you do around here? I was like, oh, you know, I'm in a market. He's like, oh, where at? I was like, oh, at uh, Ramsey. And he's like, I go to church with Dave Ramsey. I just saw his grand his grandson get baptized last Sunday. I went, okay, there's a connection there, right? Sort of. <laughs> but that's a legitimate, like, okay, he's trying to make a connection. And he goes, oh, you're in marketing. Do you do any, like, work on the side? And he's like, I've got, a, I've got a business thing. And I went, oh. And so my spidey senses go off this time. A hundred percent. And he goes, learned. yeah, it's a Fortune 500 company. I went, okay, still don't trust this guy. And I was like, what's the name? I kept egging him on to get the name. I went, okay, well, thanks for the, thanks for the info. Immediately looked it up, and it was an MLM. And I know many of our listeners are like, they do MLM. I know, I know, I know. And, and I've spoken at to, MLM conferences. And they're great. The energy's like, amazing. They're all very positive. Yeah, I mean, and they're fun. awesome. What a time to be alive. So good. All right, George, I finished my drink way yeah, before you did. yours. Clearly, you loved it. Um, I thought it was great. A 10 out of 10, Sazerac. Michael. 10 out of 10. A rare 10 out of 10 from Rachel Cruz. Uh, I gave the Cosmo a 10 out of 10, too, in this one. Yep. I think it was great. I'm going 10 out of 10 as well. A Sazerac is a winner if you do it. This way, here's the cost breakdown, $4.82 because the absinthe is in there, and that's very costly. So it's got absinthe, sugar cube, rye, peychaud bitters, angostura bitters, cognac, and lemon peel. And it all just comes together in this perfect medley and harmony, Rachel. It's so beautiful. So you can find the recipe in the show notes and just give it a try this weekend. And let us know what you think. And if you have any other recipe ideas, you feel free to DM us. I've loved all the ones that people have sent us so far. It's been great. All right, George, it's closing time. That's right. So if you liked this episode, please share it. It's one of the best ways to get the word out about anything in life, right? We are so overly saturated with information and content. There's just so much out there. So when you can kind of just push through the noise and tell your friends, hey, listen to this. Hopefully it'll give them a laugh, some information and inspiration. And I love reading the reviews. So keep leaving those reviews. And people are saying, hey, I needed this levity in my day. Life is heavy. Life is hard. It's fun to just laugh and goof off. And they say they always learn something new. That's our hope, George. That's what we wanted when we started this podcast. I learned something new. And I, me too. You guys, make sure to join us next Thursday on a new episode of Smart Smart Money Money Happy Happy Hour. Hour.